One very interesting thing about Spanish hiatuses is that they may resolve to diphthongs. A couple of caveats. There are a few different ways that Spanish hiatus pronunciation may vary from standard, and resolving to a diphthong is only one of them. But I think that that one is the most important and interesting, so it's the one I'm going to discuss here. And I say may resolve, because whether any particular hiatus resolves to a diphthong depends on many different factors, some of them external to phonology and some of them internal to phonology. The external factors include things like dialectal and sociolinguistic differences, register, style, and frequency. In other words, there are differences from one dialect to another regarding which hiatuses resolve to diphthongs and under what circumstances. In very general terms, in Spain, southern dialects tend to resolve hiatuses more than northern dialects. Latin American Spanish tends to resolve hiatuses more than peninsular. And in Latin America, certain dialects resolve them more than others, although I haven't found the differences in Latin America summarized in a convenient generalization. Within any given dialect, the Spanish of the working class tends to resolve hiatuses more than the Spanish of the upper class. When speaking in a way that's casual and spontaneous, Spanish speakers are more likely to resolve hiatuses than when speaking in registers or styles that are more formal, slower, or more careful. And the hiatuses in very common words are more likely to resolve to diphthongs than hiatuses in uncommon words. Similarly, common hiatuses are more likely to resolve than more unusual hiatuses. Many academic papers and textbook chapters have been published on each of these topics, and while I could make a whole video on each of them, I'm not going to. These topics are beyond the scope of this channel. I only mention them to help you understand what a complex subject hiatus resolution is. If you're a student or non-native speaker of Spanish and you think you understand how hiatus is resolved to diphthongs, I urge you to consider that the topic is probably more complex than you think. Now the phonology of hiatus resolution is well within the scope of a video like this one, and I know that you want to know what it is, so let's talk about it right now. First of all, what does it look like when a hiatus resolves to a diphthong? Well, in each case, the E transforms into an E, or the O transforms into an U, and the two vowels are pronounced as a single syllable following the rules I outlined in my video on diphthongs. So, AE becomes AI, AO becomes AO, EA becomes YA, EO becomes YO, OA becomes WA, and OE becomes WE. Let's look at some examples. The word Aeropuerto contains the hiatus AE, which could resolve to I. So depending on all these factors we mentioned earlier, Aeropuerto may resolve to Aeropuerto. Observe that in the resolved version, the word is one syllable shorter. Aeropuerto, Aeropuerto. The word linea contains the diphthong EA, which could resolve to YA. Based on all the external factors, Linea may resolve to linea. Observe that in the resolved version, the word is one syllable shorter. Linea, linea. The word edoe contains the hiatus oe, which could resolve to we. So based on all the external factors, certain speakers under certain circumstances may resolve edoe to edoe. And as always, the resolved version is one syllable shorter. Edoe. Airway. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that in these examples, neither of the vowels belonging to a hiatus is the stressed syllable of the word. Here is the hiatus, and here is the stressed syllable. This is actually one of the internal phonological factors that influences whether a hiatus resolves to a diphthong. When neither of the vowels in the hiatus is the stressed syllable of the word, then the hiatus is more likely to resolve to a diphthong. Let's look at some more examples. The word campeón contains the hiatus eo, which could resolve to yo. So campeón may resolve to campeón. Observe that the resolved version is one syllable shorter. Campeón, campeón. The word almohada contains the hiatus oa, because the h is silent. That oa could resolve to wa. So certain speakers under certain circumstances may resolve almohada to almohada. And the resolved version would be one syllable shorter. Almohada, almohada. And golpear contains the hiatus ea, which could resolve to ya. So some speakers of some dialects may resolve golpear to golpear. And of course the resolved version is one syllable shorter. 
golpear, golpear. Now, in these cases, you'll notice that the stressed syllable in the word is one of the letters of the hiatus. Here is the hiatus, and here is where the stress falls. And this brings us to our second phonological rule of hiatuses. When the stressed syllable of the word coincides with a hiatus, that hiatus may resolve to a diphthong, as long as the stress falls on the vowel that would become the nucleus of the syllable in the resulting diphthong. What does that mean? Well, here are all the hiatuses that may become diphthongs, and here are all the diphthongs they may become. And in the resulting diphthongs, these are the nuclei. So if the natural stress of the word falls on that same vowel in the hiatus, then the hiatus may resolve to a diphthong. And this is the case with all three of these examples. The natural stress of the word is also the nucleus of the resulting diphthong. But, and here we have the last phonological rule of hiatus resolution, when the stressed syllable of the word coincides with a hiatus and the stress falls on the vowel that would become the glide or semi-vowel in the resulting diphthong, then the hiatus will not resolve to a diphthong. Let's take a look at some examples of this rule. The word deseo contains the hiatus eo. A non-native Spanish speaker who's overly enthusiastic about resolving hiatuses to diphthongs might try to convert this eo into yo, producing this word. What's the problem with this? It looks a lot like the other examples we've just discussed, doesn't it? Well, there's a very big difference, and that is that in the original word, the stress fell here, while in this version, the stress cannot fall here, since this is the glide in a diphthong. In this word, as it's written, the stress must fall here. Deseo versus desio. And if you put the stress on the second syllable, it still wouldn't fall here. Now it would fall on the nucleus of this syllable, which is here. Desio. In order for the hiatus in this word to resolve to a diphthong, the stress would have to shift from this position to some other position, and that simply isn't allowed in Spanish phonology. And if you change the E to I and leave the stress where it is, the word would be pronounced desil, which is no longer a case of a hiatus resolving to a diphthong. That's just a different hiatus. Deseo versus desil. From the perspective of Spanish phonology, that's a pointless or even destructive sound change, and Spanish doesn't do it. So because of where the natural stress falls in this word, the eo hiatus in deseo cannot resolve to a diphthong. The word canoa contains the hiatus oa. An overenthusiastic student might be tempted to convert oa to wa, producing this word. But again, there's a problem. In the original word, the stress falls here. But in this word, as written, it would fall here. Canoa versus canoa. And if you put the stress on the second syllable, it would normally fall here, since this is the nucleus of the diphthong. Canoa versus canoa. This is just wrong. Again, you could change the O to U and leave the stress where it is, but that doesn't resolve the hiatus to a diphthong. It just creates a different hiatus. Canoa versus canua. This is a pointless or even destructive sound change, and Spanish doesn't do it. So because of where the natural stress falls in this word, the OA hiatus in canoa cannot resolve to a diphthong. All right, this principle of only resolving hiatuses when the stress falls on certain vowels has some really interesting consequences for verbs. Consider the verb cojear that contains the hiatus ea. Because in the infinitive form the stress falls on a, it could resolve like this, cojear to cojear. However, in certain conjugations the stress falls on e, cojeo, cojeas, cojea, cojean. Because the stress falls on a, these conjugations cannot resolve to diphthongs. But apart from the infinitive form that we just looked at, in the present tense, the stress does fall on the a in cojeamos and cojeais. So those two conjugations are candidates for resolution and may resolve to cojeamos and cojeais. Another interesting example is the verb caer, in which the stress falls on the e in the infinitive form, maintaining the hiatus, caer, but falls on other syllables in various conjugations, permitting the hiatus to resolve. For example, in the future tense, because the spoken stress doesn't coincide with a hiatus at all, it can resolve. Caeré to caeré. Caerás to caerás. Caerá to caerá, etc. All right, a few closing thoughts and we'll wrap this up. Just like all Spanish phonological rules, hiatuses and hiatus resolution occur across word boundaries. So, for example, in this word combination, la oveja, 
The A ah and O oh constitute a hiatus that might resolve to the au diphthong, depending on all those various factors. La oveja to la oveja. But in this word combination, la obra, the exact same ao hiatus wouldn't resolve because the spoken stress of this word falls on the o. La obra. I could give a bunch of examples of hiatuses at word boundaries, either resolving or not, but this video has already gone a little long, and such hiatuses follow exactly the same principles that we've already discussed for hiatuses within words. Now, I generally recommend that non native Spanish speakers avoid resolving hiatuses to diphthongs. Because the factors that influence hiatus resolution in native speech are complex and difficult for non-natives to assess, we can never know how a native of any particular dialect will perceive our attempts at hiatus resolution. We may think we sound more native-like by doing it, while a native listener may perceive it as inaccurate, careless, or uneducated sounding at that moment in that context. It's hard for us to know. That being said, I know that I consistently resolve some hiatuses. So I tell students not to do it, but then I know that I do it, at least sometimes. All right, this has been our discussion of hiatuses. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more Spanish pronunciation in the near future.